What's up everybody? So it's been almost a month since the last book club episode, and there's a good reason for it. Mostly, I ran into some big problems. So I needed to take some time and really think about how to solve those problems and explore some new topics. As you've seen, probably my recent videos have been about like streams, uh, cloud scheduling functions, and notification stuff. I've learned a lot about that while making those videos, and now we're ready to put it back into the app. So this video will be about how I solved these four main problems and how we need to restructure the app in order to solve these. So here are the four problems we have. How do we send a new book notification? So if you saw this screen, new book revealed in this amount of days, how do you send a notification to everybody that this book has been revealed? Second, how does send notification for book club about to happen and book club reveal about to happen? So we wanted to send a notification when this timer was getting close, maybe like a day before or a couple hours before, and same thing with this. Then we have how to change to the new book once the book club timer runs out. So when this runs out, how do you make put the new book in and everything and change all of this stuff that needs to happen? And then lastly, how do we solve all these problems without spending a ton of money on Firebase? Because Firebase costs money in order to read and write data. And if we don't do it efficiently, it will cost a lot of money. So let's answer these questions one by one. So how do we send a new book notification? Pretty much whenever we pick a new book, it will be added to a new collection named notifications. So the reason we do this is because there's some cloud functions that you can execute whenever a document is created. So this one, we when a new book is picked, we will create a new document in the notifications collection, and this will trigger a cloud function to send out notifications to all the users. So it will happen immediately, not when the timer expires. So two, how to send notifications for book club about to happen and book club reveal about to happen. So this is a decision that I made that I think this will make the app a lot simpler, and this is canceled from the plans. So I think looking at the app, there's not much benefit that you get that book club is about to happen or next book is revealed. Whenever you want to check the app, you'll have the information. And hopefully with all the, your book club members, you will have some sort of contact with them, maybe over a group message or something, and you'll be able to let them know that book club is about to happen. Also look into the future, I'm hoping to make some sort of group chat functionality inside the app. So you'll probably be in contact with your book club members and you'll know that book club is coming up. That was the idea behind it. So then three, how do you change to the new book once the book club timer expires? And also change, so basically changing this when the timer gets to zero and changing this to ask for the next book when timer gets to zero. How does that happen? So we're still going to definitely need that. We can't cancel that from the plans. That's a critical part. But we're going to do this using Cloud Scheduler. So we had a video about the Cloud Scheduler. The main difference we're going to have here, though, is we're going to run the Cloud Scheduler every hour instead of every minute, like the original plan was. So this means that you can only schedule a book to be due on the hour. So this method will have the cloud function invocations a lot lower than it's almost 60 times lower because we're going to be doing it every hour instead of every minute. But the main problem was the invocations. You get 2 million a month for free. The problem was that every minute we would have to read the documents to see if it's if the time has expired or not. But now we only have to do that every hour. So hopefully it'll save us on reads and other things like that. And then the last, how do you do this without spending a ton on Firebase? So you can just see number two and three. Those are the main ways. So we're not we're no longer trying to send out notifications. That means we don't have to check every minute whether a notification needs to be sent out or things like that. And then we only check every hour for the cloud scheduler, which makes it makes a lot less reads a lot less function invocations. So how is this going to look like on the UI? 
So here are the three main states that we're going to have in our book club app. So before book club due date and new book is not picked, before book club due date and new book is picked, and then on the actual book due date. So before book club due date and book is not picked, we're going to have, let's say, book number one is due in 10 days. Then over here we'll have waiting for, I don't know, Jerry to pick, to pick book. Then let's say the new book gets picked. We have same thing here. Book number one is due in, let's say nine days now. And here we'll say next book is book number two. So then on the book due date, this will switch. The top will now become book number two is due in whatever 20 days and then waiting for Thomas to pick book so this this whole functionality where we're waiting for the next book to be revealed is pretty much gone I realized that I don't really think that's even necessary like I don't I don't see what value that brings to a book club to have to wait till a certain time until the book is revealed. I think the user should be able to pick it whenever they want and the next one people should be able to see it. So if you want you can read ahead if you finish this book already. So all of these things will be changed in the background using cloud functions and the UI will be changed because we will be converting everything to a stream. So we'll be listening to any changes in the database once the changes come in it'll show the correct UI. And in the cloud functions in the background, you're not relying on the app to be open or anything. They will just be occurring in the background and everything should work smoothly, hopefully. So the thing to note here is we're going to create the timer to not show seconds. We're only going to show minutes because this timer won't actually be the real timer. Whenever our user opens the app, they'll have the time and they'll create a timer that's local. It won't be the same timer as in the cloud functions, pretty much. So it won't be extremely accurate. But from what I've noticed, cloud functions usually execute within seconds. So if we did it every hour, from what I noticed, it should be pretty close to that hour. So the users probably won't notice that the minutes aren't exactly timed up. So now the last thing we want to go over. In the beginning, we had a widget tree. And it looked like this. We said we we're going to keep this updated. But to be honest, I didn't really have enough time to be doing all of that. So it kind of got forgotten about. But for this restructuring, I thought I'd bring it back and show how we're going to restructure the app to make all this stuff work. I remember saying that I'll keep updating it and to hopefully avoid any problems that might occur. And I didn't do that. And some problems obviously occurred. Now we need to restructure. Maybe if I did, it would have worked out better. So this is what we had. We're going to pretty much completely scrap this. Although it still has the right idea and pretty close to what we need, it's kind of hard to understand and I don't really like it. And I tried to add logical decisions and stuff and I think it's just better to keep it a widget tree. So this is the new diagram I created. I decided to just create a widget tree, make everything as simple as I can so I can understand it and update it for real now as I go. So these blocks around it are state blocks. So we're going to have three states. We have the off state, which we had previously, but now it will be streamed. We have a new state that is a user info state. This would be accessed whether you're in a group or you're not in a group. And then we also have the group info state, where you'll only have the group information. and That's only if you are in a group. So let's go through it more in depth. So here we have the main. It goes into the root function. In the main, we will obviously create our stream provider for the whole app. I guess technically this can be moved out here then. Then our root will send us to one of four screens. If we're in an unknown state, it'll send us to a splash screen, which pretty much just says loading. If we're not logged in, we'll obviously go to the login screen. 
And from there, we'll go to the sign up screen if we need to make an account. And then the two main ones are if we're not in a group, if we're logged in and not in a group, or if we're logged in and are in a group. So if we're not in a group, we'll have two options to join a group, which we will just need the group ID for, or to create a group. If you are creating a group, that means you're the first person in that group. So that means you will need to add the first book as well. And then the other option is whether you log in and you are in a group already. So once you're in your group, you'll have three buttons possible. One to either finish the book, two to look at the book club history, or three to add a new book if it's your turn to add a book. And then sign out, but that's not really leading you to another widget. That's just signing you out, right? So those are the three options to either add a book, finish the book, or look at the book club history. So there we go. That's the cleaned up widget tree that I have for the app now. This looks a lot nicer than this did. And it's easier to understand. So to summarize the big changes that were coming up next, we have to convert everything to a stream. We have to set up cloud functions to every hour, check if the book has expired and whether it needs to change the book. And three, send out a notification for whenever the user has put in the next book. So that's it for this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions or any suggestions on how to make this architecture better or maybe better ways to solve the problems I brought up. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy the video and thanks for watching.